Welcome to the Travels with Kev podcast. I am Kev, and I'm a traveler, and this is my podcast, so now we know how that all fits together. This, this podcast is designed for beginner travelers to get started, intermediate travelers to up their game, or for anybody else to join along in the fun. Today's podcast, well, in the past, I have been doing uh, very informative podcasts, mostly on, on Amtrak-related stuff. And today, I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to try to let my personality show out a little bit, try something different. I'm going to talk about what I put into planning my next adventure, which is going to be in August of 22. So this being my 12th podcast, I'm like, I'm still trying to figure out how I want things to go. So I hope you like it. If you want to let me know what you think of it, you can uh, go to travelswithkev.com slash podcast. And at the bottom, there's a place where you can let me know and say, hey, that's awesome, or something constructive, I guess. Anyway, let's get started. Over this past year, it's not that I haven't traveled, uh, but most of my travels have been road trips. Most of it's uh, to visit family. I took my dad up to see uh, his mom up north, a lot of trips out to my sisters in Nebraska. And a lot of those did have some solo sections at heart, I'm a solo traveler. I love traveling by myself, but I, I, I don't mind traveling with others, but sometimes it's just nice being responsible for me where I don't have to worry about what they want to eat or where they want to go. So this trip I have coming up in August that I've, I've planned out or still tweaking as you'll find out, uh, part of it's solo and part of it is not. And, and it's, it's a great combination. It will be fun. And, and I want to let you know why I'm sharing this with you. Because there are some of you who are probably wondering, who cares? If you're in the who cares, just listen to this section. And if you still feel who cares afterwards, maybe this is not the right podcast for you. But um, there's a few reasons why I would share a podcast like this. Uh, one, so you can see I'm an active traveler. You know, the, you know, as the old expression, the proof is in the pudding. Well, if I'm not making pudding, pudding, am I much of a cook? I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but the second is because I'm told by some people that they enjoy these sort of things. So I know of a few travelers out there who uh, aren't, aren't traveling anymore because either of, of physical or, or health reasons. And so, you know, I'm, I'm inviting those people into this game. I'm inviting you to come into into what I am doing. The third reason, I want this to be a learning tool. So if you're a beginner traveler, maybe you're looking at going at a trip to Philadelphia where you can see what I do to help you make decisions. Um, none of this, the neat thing about travel, there's, there's no wrong way to do things most of the time, but there are sometimes better ways of doing things. But, but learning what somebody's thought process is and, and how they looked at something can sometimes help you. But there's one thing that this isn't meant to be. I don't do a podcast like this or write articles like talking about my planning or my trips. I don't do it to brag. And I know some people have felt that way towards other travel travel content creators. And for, for me, and I would say for a lot of us in the travel content world, we don't do this to brag. We do it to serve. So you can see what we're doing. We do it to inspire I think there is a small por portion of tr content, travel content creators who do do it to break. But to be honest with you, this website costs me and, and podcast costs me a lot of money. And I'm not that vain to spend that much money to break. It really is to help, to serve, and to share. Now, okay, oh, I will admit, occasionally it will break because I have an adorable niece. And uh, I'm assuming an adorable niece and nephew on their way, they... Uh, my sister is pregnant with twins that should make their appearance at the end of July. And Abby, Abby the Newfie, if you don't know who she is, uh, check out some of my past Instagram stuff. Or I think it's travelswithcab.com slash Abby. It's my, my beautiful puppy niece who, who's who been staying with me for a while. But if you're still with me, awesome. So it is my philosophy that you need a purpose for every trip. And I know there's going to be some people out there who disagree with me, but but hear me out. For me, like I said, every every trip needs a reason. And it doesn't have to be something profound. There have been a few trips that I've taken, even recently, 
that I went, for example, took the train down to Chicago just because I wanted to get out of the house and I just wanted a train trip. That's a valid reason for me. But it's a reason. It's the point. That's why I'm going. And it, for me, if I make note of what my reasons are, it's easier to plan stuff for me. So that's that's why I always have a reason and, and what I want to get out of this trip. So the first thing that I want to get out of this trip, really, is to see Sean and David. They're friends of mine out in Philadelphia. They're, they're both great guys. They've been very generous, generous hosts. I'm very supportive of Travels with Kev. And we actually met on an Amtrak train, I believe, back in 2014, and have been friends basically ever since then. Um, Sean and I have done a few trips together, and it's just fun. We have, we're all similar in age, and it's just we have a good time when we're together. The second reason is, is I've been longing for a solo trip. And obviously this isn't a full solo trip, but a good portion of it is. The part that I really enjoy, that where I really like being a solo traveler, is, is during the journey. I love being able to sit in my room at, or even in coach if I'm in coach, uh, and just sit back and relax and, and put in some podcasts or some music or, or have a show in the background and look out the window and just, just be still. And I, and I use that time to, to reflect, to think, to work on this website. So there's, for me, it's just a great time, especially if I don't have to drive. Um, with my trips out to Omaha in, in Nebraska, where granted I did have a lot of alone time uh, driving because it's a about six to eight hours, depending on how you drive, traffic, and, and stops, and all that stuff. And if I'm dropping my parents off, I'm re- often coming back solo, or I went out solo to p- pick up Abby and stuff. I got to listen to podcasts, I got to listen to music, but I didn't just get a chance to sit back, back and relax. And so that's what I am looking forward to. The last reason of this trip is you. Like I said, I write these... the. The website I write for you. And the other part is I can read what Amtrak's doing and changes, but it's unless I experience them, it's harder for me to write about. So I wanted to keep updated on what's going on with Amtrak travel. And and so by taking these trips, it allows me to see what's going on, experience some of the new things firsthand, and I can add my thoughts and also get new photos. I got a new phone. I can now take better photos. So what do I plan on doing when I get to Philadelphia, more than likely, first thing I plan on doing is maybe having a beer and going to bed. But I should be, as you'll find out, I'll be coming in a little later. Uh, but my main goal is to see the guys and hang out with them and see what they want to do. Currently, we've been texting back and forth and sharing ideas. Um, and, and we have plenty of time. So I'm recording this at the end of June, and the trip is uh, mid-August. So we have plenty of time, but we're getting stuff ready just in case we need to get tickets and, and stuff. So Sean brought up that he wanted to go to the Philadelphia Zoo, and I'm always up for going uh, to the zoo. Um, as many of you know, if you've been around Travels with Kev for a while, I go to the Omaha Zoo quite a bit. Uh, looks like I'll be going uh, more, at least probably through the end of this year. But I love going to zoos, and I'm actually a member of the local uh, Racine Zoo in Racine, Wisconsin. And, and I just wanted to insert a travel tip here. Uh, if you like going to zoos and traveling, uh, become a member of your local zoo. By doing so, you can support the zoo. And often, you can get a discount for other zoos so, or, or become a member of a zoo that has a membership program. Um, if you go to the article that's associated with this, I have a list, or I'll try to put it in the show notes, of zoos that have uh, reciprocating discounts. Uh, my Racine Zoo membership could get us a deal there, but they're doing online tickets, so I'm not for sure. So the next thing I want to do, it's kind of like a busman's holiday, but a little different. Um, if you don't know, I'm a, an organist for an Episcopal church, and when I travel, I like to see other organs. And if you know something about organs, you probably know where, where this is heading, but if you don't, the two largest pipe organs in the world are a train apart. One's in Philadelphia at the Wanamaker, the Wanamaker organ in Philadelphia. That's in the downtown Macy's store. Uh, originally was the Wanamaker store. And the second one is in the Atlantic City Convention Hall. 
Um, I want to see both, and usually the guys are up for, for going to one of the evening concerts before we go head out for dinner or something like that. Uh, I'm David, and, or I'm sorry, Sean and I last year went and toured the Atlantic City Organ, and that was a dream come true. Um, quick aside, that uh, I never thought that organ would play again, and I never knew that that organ could be that beautiful. Uh, but the, there's a, a group of people working on restoring that organ, and it has never sounded better. It sounds better now. Um, the parts that are, are now working, they're slowly building the organ back up. Um, but I've never heard it sound that beautiful. It sounds better now than it did when it was new. And the other thing I'm considering, uh, my trips as of late, uh, I have not taken off Sundays. And I'm going to be taking off uh, Sunday for this trip. And one thing I like to do is go to the big fancy churches. So I'm looking at going to St. Clement's Episcopal Church. At least I'm hoping to. That's that's something I just kind of thought of today. Um, Peter Conte plays, is one of the organists there, and, and he's also the organist for uh, Wanamakers. I've watched some of their videos um, um, on YouTube, and I just find it fascinating. It's a very high church, and I play for uh, a low church. If you know what that means, you might want to look that up. But it's just neat all, to see all the pomp and circumstance and, and hear uh, what that music program is doing. I don't like going to churches that are about the same size as mine just because then I feel like a I don't know. It's just weird for me, but if I go to a bigger church, I, I really have a great time. Uh, Sean and I both like museums, uh, so the, we'll probably visit a few. We've talked about a few, but uh, there's some in, in Philadelphia that we haven't gone to yet. Uh, it's not that hard to take Amtrak down to D.C. and, and go to the, the, the Smithsonian. I think it's uh, under 20 bucks to go from Chicago, or I'm sorry, from Philadelphia to D.C., um, and if you're not, and if you don't have to pay to get into museums, it's it's basically pays for itself. In a way, it depends how you how you work the, your money in your head. Uh, last year we had I had a museum in mind. Ironically, the one that I wanted to go to, Sean wanted to go to, but nobody else wanted to go to the I believe it's called the Mutter Museum. It's it's a, a research museum for health, and I actually had a great time. And apparently, Sean did not have as good of time as I did. Uh, the other thing I know that we'll go to, uh, probably some coffee shops, uh, restaurants, some bars. I know Sean's been working on that one. He's been sending me photos of places of, oh, we need to go here. So I know he's been working reconnaissance for that. All right. So now let's start talking about the trip, the transportation part, the part that I love working out. So... There's three stages, kind of three stages to this. The first one, I have to get to Chicago, and I have a few options for that. I am fortunate to live close to Amtrak's long-distance hub, so most of Amtrak's long-distance trains leave or return to Chicago. And all the options that I'm looking at, all my return options, are of those trains. So it makes it easy, and I know, and I have several choices of how I can get to and from um, where I live to Chicago. Like I said, there's several options, but one I'm not looking at is driving. Uh, I don't want to drive to Chicago for several reasons. The main one is I just don't want to. It should be enough. But um, between gas prices and parking, and it actually would take me longer than some of the options that I have. So I would rather just leave a car at home. So what are my choices? So my choice is to get from Chicago Union Station, or from where I am to Chicago Union Station, range between $9.50 and 200 plus. All included train ride, but could consist of a bus or plane. Yes, yes, I, I looked this up. I can fly from Milwaukee to Chicago. Ironically, out of all the trips that I could plan, that one takes the longest. It's just funny. Okay, so my train only plans. The cheapest option I have, I said, is is nine fifty, and that is uh, a one way ticket from either. I would probably leave either from um, Antioch, Illinois, or Fox Lake, Illinois, to downtown Chicago. Those are nine. That's nine fifty. Or I could get a ten dollar day pass, and for example, I could leave early out of Chicago or early. <laughs> 
or I could leave early for Chicago, uh, get down there and ride any of Metra's trains that I wanted until it's time for me to leave. So having two stations, technically three stations that I could go to um, for Metra, that one is a cheap and easy uh, solution. Um, it takes anywhere between an hour and a half to about an hour and 45 minutes, depending on which train I hit or take. I guess I don't hit trains, but... The other train-only option uh, is the fastest and most comfortable, uh, coming in around $24, and that's Amtrak's Hiawatha. Um, I like this one just because it is the fast and easy one. And like I said, more comfortable. There's seat trays and all that stuff. Um, the other option I have, now these next two, I would also leave from Sturdivant, and I'd have to take the Hiawatha North. So yes, I'm... <laughs> basically have to go to Milwaukee to go to Chicago for these next ones, next couple. To take the bus south, like I just said, I need to go north to Milwaukee's Intermodal Station. It's about a 23-minute bus or train ride uh, between Sturdivant and Milwaukee to catch Greyhound. And I believe that they're the only bus company right now that has service directly from the Intermodal Station to Union Station. Um, there's a, there is a bus station not too far from Union Station, but I would rather just get uh, direct. So if I book early enough, I could reserve a seat for $15 plus a $10 train ride to Milwaukee. So that put the price at $25, and that costs a dollar more than taking the Hiawatha. And obviously it would take longer. But there's some neat advantages to doing this, to taking the bus. Yes, if, if you are wondering in the back of your mind, this is all the stuff that goes through my head. I love trying to come up with different ways of doing things. So if I do take the train up to Milwaukee, there's a coffee shop right outside the station. Um, I'll plug them. I'm not getting anything out of this. But Stone Creek, their, their uh, roasting facilities uh, is right there. they got good food, good coffee, place to, to work for a little bit. And then I have a couple of friends in Milwaukee, so we could have lunch. And then I could take the bus down. And it would be nice taking the bus down. I've uh, taken Greyhound down before. I have an article about that. Um, I actually had a decent time. That was during the more the height of, of the pandemic. Um, I thought that they handled things very well. And most of the passengers uh, abided by the, the current guidelines. Uh, the thing that I like about the bus is it's just a little different view. I've taken, I've taken all the trains down to Chicago. Uh, combination of hundreds of times and so taking the bus is just a little different and it can take up like I said I, I could have it take up uh, quite a bit of time and get some little small trips in there and and part of the thought of doing that is I, I am one of those people who I hate waiting at home to go on a trip I get antsy so if I break up a trip by doing something like I just talked about I'm calmer and I can have more fun all right so the last option of getting to Chicago, yes, we're still talking about getting to Chicago, is flying. Yes, I can fly. Well, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch it. I'm sorry. I'm off topic already. Maybe I should stick to the script. I love the idea of flying to Chicago. Why? Because it's just different. It's something I haven't done before. And like I said with, with taking the bus, I have to take uh, the Hiawatha North for about 10 to 13 minutes and get off at the Milwaukee Airport Station stop and then fly to O'Hare. Once I get to O'Hare, I take the Blue Line downtown and then I walk, I think it's a couple of blocks. I've, I've done it in reverse um, and then walk to Union Station. While this found, sounds fun, this is actually the least practical for a few reasons. First, the cost... It costs the most. It's around $150 to $200 when I was researching it, the penultimate week of June. Um, but it's that much for about a 45 to 60-minute flight. Second, I'd have to get to the airport early to get through security and then add another 45 to 50 minutes plus to take the CTA down. For that price, I could actually fly to Tampa. So... What am I going to do? Well, I'm not sure yet. I have time. I can actually, I could decide the day of. Um, currently, I'm, I'm either 
leaning at taking uh, the Antioch Metra down or or taking the bus down, just just for the fun of it. Um, I can tell you this with certainty, unless someone would sponsor the flight because they wanted me to write about that experience, I'm not flying, even though I think it would be fun. All right, this is probably a little bit more interesting for some of you. My plan for the show trip was to take the train, so I only looked at Amtrak for this section of the journey, and, and I've been to Philadelphia several times, and I've only been there by, by train. So conveniently, there are three long-distance trains that I can take to the East Coast. One is direct, and two would have transfers. And one thing all these trains have in common is they all have sleeping cars, and they all have coach seating, and the food offerings include Amtrak's Flex Dining, and there's a cafe car. So what are the trains? It's the Capital Limited, the Cardinal, and the Lakeshore Limited. So the Capital Limited uh, goes from Chicago to D.C., and then I would have to transfer from D.C. up to Philadelphia, or I could take the train to Pittsburgh and take the Pennsylvanian to Philadelphia. I really like that option. I don't like taking the Pennsylvanian Capital Limited route home uh, because either direction you go, there's like a two, two and a half hour uh, layover in in the Pittsburgh train station. And I can tolerate it more in the morning. At night, it's when I want to be going to bed. So I'm just I'm a little more of a happy camper taking it out. Uh, and a little bit more into that later. Um, the Capital Limited is out of the three options that I have. It's the only Superliner two-story train that I have to choose from. Part of it, the, the Capital Limited and I do have history. It was my my first year of traveling on long distance trains was 2013. Uh, in that March, I took the California Zephyr out to S San Francisco. And then later that year, I wanted another trip. I was starting to get addicted to train travel. So I took the Capital Limited out to DC. And then I took the Cardinal, which I'm going to talk about next home. And I've been on the Capital Limited, believe it or not, every year since 2013. It's the only long-distance train that I have been on every year. So that's just kind of a fun little history. So as I said before, uh, I've trapped, I have transfer possibilities in Washington, D.C., including the Northeast Corridor, the Silver Star, and Palmetto, uh, a few other regional trains in the Acela, and then Pittsburgh, I can get the Pennsylvania. So the pros of this train is it's a second train to leave, but I can get there sooner. It's as far as train travel goes, it's almost a straight line from Chicago to D.C. And it's the fastest way to get to Philadelphia if I take the Pittsburgh transfer. Um, I, I like the Pennsylvania because it is the, that route. It's it is a regional train. It has some beautiful scenery, and if you've ever heard of the historic horseshoe curve, uh, that you go through it on that route. Um, but the con is that that layover, almost you know, two and a half hour layover in the morning. Uh, the station's decent, but the only food and beverage service there is is out of vending machines. So that's uh, that limits the options. So the cons is that layover and the vending machines, like I just said. And I've been on this train more than others, which I said I, I do enjoy the route. Um, but i kind of looking at other options. So um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'll talk more about that at the end. So the next option is the Cardinal. Now, for me, the Cardinal is one of Amtrak's hidden gems. It offers excellent views of the northern edge of the South. I, I'm sure you could see my air quotes. Well, this is a great train. It is hard to book because it only runs three days a week. But I can get it, and it runs from Chicago to New York in kind of a roundabout way. It takes a big, it's kind of like a big J. Um, so the, the pros, uh, as I said, is this train allows me to go from Chicago to Philadelphia without transferring. Um, in Washington, D.C., I can get, they do switch locomotives, and it's time I can get off the train a little bit. Uh, but 
with not having a transfer, I do get a, I can have dinner on the train, so when I get off the train, I won't be starving or have to visit the cafe car. These next two trains have view liner equipment, and the nice thing about that, that's a single level Amtrak equipment, and I haven't been on that in a few years, so it would be nice to update. There's some new cars, and so it would be nice to update some of my, my experiences and my videos of that. And also, like I said before, this train has some lovely views I enjoy seeing. The con is the Cardinal is the first train to leave Chicago, but one of the last ones to get me there. Also, uh, if I want to book the trip, I have to base the trip off of the days that it runs. So those are the pros and cons for that. And that brings us to the Lakeshore Limited. Like the Cardinal, it is view liner equipment. So some of that is the same as with the Cardinal. Uh, and this train is the last train to leave uh, Chicago. It's the last long distance train to leave Union Station at night. So I can get a full day in. Uh, the, the best views for this train uh, are along the Hudson Valley. If you leave out of New York between Albany and the Hudson Valley, at least for me, those are some of my favorite views. A lot of the other part of the, or a big chunk of the route, um, you go through at night, so you're sleeping. Uh, and when you wake up, you're going through uh, areas that you would see on the Capital Limited. Uh, they both run on the same tracks for a little bit. Um, there is a Boston option for this, uh, but currently, as the time that I'm recording this podcast, they're doing track work uh, for the Boston section. CSX, CSX Railroad is doing construction, and so more than likely I would be catching a bus and I don't mind uh, the, the bus option, but if I'm going to pick the Boston section because I haven't been on it, I actually would want to be on the train for that section. So um, it also leaves from New York, and I haven't been to the new lounge in New York. So if I book this train, it'll be through New York. So the Lakeshore Limited pros. Uh, since this train does not leave until late. I can have a full day of activities in Chicago or elsewhere. Uh, and like I just said, I can, I can have a layover at New York Penn Station in both directions, if I, you know, however I take it. And like I said, I can use the new launch, which I haven't done yet. Uh, the cons are that there's not much scenery, and I get into Philadelphia late. And because of that track work, it eliminates uh, the Boston section that I wanted to try. So there's a lot of pros and cons with that one. So to spoil the bubble, uh, I have sleeping accommodations. I'm not doing this trip in coach. Uh, I would. I've done basically this trip in coach. Um, but I was able to get to get rooms. And sleepers or sleeping cars on Amtrak do add to the enjoyment of the ride. Because I will have a few layovers, I can take advantage of the lounges. There's a lounge in uh, Washington, D.C., in Philadelphia, in New York, in Boston South, and in Chicago. I don't know if I've mentioned Chicago before. But it allows me to relax in comfy chairs. There's complimentary beverages, priority boarding, and more. And also, too, having sleeper accommodations on the train includes all my meals and beverages while on the train, most all my beverages, uh, and it includes an adult beverage with dinner. Uh, if I want additional adult beverages or something extra to snack on, I can purchase those in the cafe. The other advantage is, is I can shower and sleep horizontally on the train. So what did I choose and why? When I was looking at this trip, I was ready to book the Capital Limited and call it a day. But I changed my mind. I decided that I wanted to take a trip in either late fall or early winter. And Sean actually talked about riding the Capital Limited. So I decided to wait because I can actually, if I just want to go on a little train trip, actually this would be a long train trip, but I could... Take the Capital Limited from Chicago to D.C., have a meal in D.C., hop back on that train and head home and, and do that with, with one night and no hotels. So I might do that. So traveling from Chicago to Philadelphia, I picked the Cardinal. Yay! Okay, I did it for a few reasons. The first reason is it's one of my favorites, and it's been a long time since I've been on that train. The second is I never took that train past D.C. And I thought it would be nice to take it further and not have to worry about transfers. Like I said, I can eat on that train, get an extra meal before I get into Philadelphia. It just seemed 
like a nice option. Coming home, I'm taking Lakeshore Limited out of New York because I wanted to see the new lounge and take photos and report to you about that. I have most of my tickets booked, uh, but for the Philadelphia to New York section um, and from Chicago to back home, uh, both are cheap tickets, and I wanted to keep both of those a little fluid because I wasn't for sure if Sean wanted to come with me to New York. Um, he can if he wanted to. Uh, so we can plan, change our plans up then. Um, it, there's enough trains uh, where I don't need to book them right now. A uh, few new experiences is my room for the Cardinal is a dorm baggage car. Um, I, there's like eight rooms in there, uh, and the only people, the other people who are in there are Amtrak staff. So it is one of the new roomettes, which I haven't done before. Uh, and, and with the Lakeshore, um, I'm not for sure if it's in a new sleeping car or not. So I'll be able to get photos of the new Viewliner sleeper cars. Yay! That'll be exciting. So I'm going to wrap this up a little bit, but before I go any further, I want to thank my folks uh, for this trip. My birthday was in June, and as a gift, my parents gave me a gift of Amtrak points. It's really a win-win for both of us because I get a journey, and they didn't have to pay any money. So there's that. Uh, but I, I would not be successful if it wasn't for them. First of all, they, they, well, they gave me birth and other stuff so but they have been great supporters of me and they they celebrate when I have victories with the site and they're sympathetic when things aren't going well and not just them a lot of you are too that my my listeners and and my readers and I'm truly appreciated for all those who, of you who come along with me on my journeys I'm learning as I'm going I've traveled for years, but I'm not done learning on how to travel. I'm still learning new stuff. I, Where some could consider me an expert, I still look at myself as, as a student. Um, because if you quit learning, then you just become stagnant and you become boring. So I was, I'm always trying to learn stuff. And by people reading and joining the email list, if you're not on the email list, you can do that. Uh, Travelswithkev.com, you can go there join the email list yay um but all this stuff we we can grow as a travel community together and that's and that's the whole point of of the podcast and all that stuff it's not for me to just idly talk to myself in a room with a microphone but to have you come along with me and i love that community i really want to work on building a uh, the travels with kev community and if you guys have ideas let me know um quick the other side is for this trip um packing some people want to know how i pack so i have two tortuga uh, travel backpacks one's a little bit bigger than the other uh, it will be one of those and probably a small packable backpack um, often i put all my snacks in a packable uh, backpack usually by the time i'm where i need to go most of the snacks are out of it so it fits in my, in my bag and also too that way then i can uh, if, if we need to go somewhere and I need to bring something, I can just use that. Um, but once again, thank you for coming along and thank you for for being part of, of this community at whatever level you are. If you're a first-time listener and you want to come back, you're more than welcome. If you're a last-time listener, well, thanks. Thanks for listening. I, I appreciate it. But if you find any value and you want to help Travels with Kev go further... You can go to travelswithkev.com slash value. That's what I was looking for, value. And and from there, you can find different ways of supporting. Um, I'm looking at putting together a Patreon program. Um, part of it at some of the levels will be where you and I can talk about your travels. So if you have uh, travel concerns you want to talk out, I can talk to you. Um, I can help you plan trips and stuff like that. That's If you have ideas for that, let me know. Um, I'm still trying to work all that stuff out. Um, but that's all I have. I hope you enjoy this. If you like this style of podcast, please let me know. Travelswithcab.com slash podcast. And at the bottom, there's a little form in there. I should do a video. I use my hands way too much. But anyway, if you like this, great. Let me know. Um, I have nothing else, so my niece will take us out. Have a great day. Safe travels.
you were listening to the Travel Web Cub podcast. Bye.